in our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. Christian science is such a constant blessing. I'm very grateful to be a member of this church. In the spring of 2017, after being in Plainfield for a few years, I began to have this feeling that I was reaching the limit for the amount of work I could do in a week. So much goes on here with all the videos, audio editing, and working on the website and other things. My week was chock full. So I started asking God for help because I knew there was a lot more that remained to be done. And a few months later, my practitioner let me know that Linda was available to do more work. She had already been updating a few pages on the website, and that had given me enough to know that this would be quite an excellent thing. And it has been, and she's taking on a good share of the work. And so after that, I started getting inspired to write these small programs that help us to work faster. Now there are around 100 little programs to make videos and convert files and upload to the website and other things. I'm so grateful to God for all that, as I never thought I'd be able to do that kind of work. But of course, he makes all things possible. And then, after many years of having my kids every other weekend, while sitting in traffic one night, we all simultaneously agreed to have our visits once a month. It has given me a bunch of extra time and it was just such a smooth transition. I really am so grateful for that. And because of all of this, the time has been freed up to take on new languages and other new projects that are going on here. And just to get a lot of work done on the website. And I'm so grateful for how God keeps giving more work, but does it in a way that helps me to learn lessons as I need them. I'm also very grateful to the regular, regular support of my practitioner, without which I know I would not have been able to do all of this. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Diana in Berlin. Hello, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm in Berlin now, and I'm very grateful for the wonderful lesson on reality from last week and the discussion about reality in the round table on March 31st. I remember years ago when I was first singing in Christian science churches, I found the subject of reality to be curious. And later, when I was really studying Christian science and reading the lessons, I found the subject of reality to be refreshing because so many people talk about reality as being negative or depressing and about the real world as being difficult. Last week's lesson on reality was so uplifting to me and so full of truth. With all the recent teaching here at Plainfield about the first commandment, about rising above the mist and handling animal magnetism, I feel that I have finally grasped that truth is truth and will always be true and enduring no matter how real or persistent error appears. Error, no matter how long it seems to go on, and no matter how real it seems to be, will end, but truth always prevails. So, I am continuing to learn about divine truth, align my thinking with it, and trust that truth will prevail. I learned in the discussion that error will leave when it is no longer needed, once the lesson that the error has come to teach is learned. So I am realizing that I need to stay awake and catch the error quickly without getting angry or annoyed or frustrated by the error. As Mary Baker Eddy writes, trials are proofs of God's care, and I am realizing that they really are particularly when I choose to learn the lesson that will cause me to align my thinking with divine truth and purify my thoughts. And this makes me think of Isaiah 1.18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Gary. I'm so very grateful for uh, all of the lessons, many, many lessons that I have learned since arriving in Plainfield a few years ago. Um, I was remembering shortly after I arrived in Plainfield, um, I went through a period where I was waking up unhappy in the morning and anxious about what was going to happen during the day. And this was something I'd never experienced before. I'd always been kind of a happy guy and looked forward to doing <laughs> whatever I had to do. So this was, this was really uh, strange and quite disturbing to me. And it got so bad, I, I actually had trouble doing basic things um, each day. I had trouble eating, I had trouble paying attention. It was, it was quite disturbing. So I asked our dear practitioner, Mrs. Evans, for help with this. And uh, one of the things that I was told was, first thing in the morning, after I've read the lesson, to sit quietly and ask God what he wants for me to do that day. And keep asking. Don't rush off to your day, but keep asking until you get an answer of peace. And then when I get an answer of peace, to act on it. Well, this was the beginning of a discipline that literally changed my life, that I so badly needed. I began to do this, and I found that very shortly after that, I started waking up happy in the morning and not so anxious about what was going to happen during the day, but gaining a trust in God that I w was much stronger than I had ever had. And it was the beginning of uh, the essential discipline of actually learning to listen to God speaking to me. So it was very clear that the lesson I needed to learn was I can't be happy unless I am about what God has for me to do. And I shouldn't try anything else. God is a good God. He loves us all. And he wouldn't ever ask any of us to do anything that wasn't good for us and, and very fulfilling. So I'm very grateful for this lesson, for this healing, really, um, and for all the things that I am learning in this church about the God who loves us very much. And it's great to be here tonight. Thank you. Lil. I'm so grateful God brought me to this independent Christian Science Church where I found my best friend and my whole life has changed. The beginning of hymn number 224 says it perfectly. <clears throat> o Lord, I would delight in thee and on thy care depend. To thee in every trouble flee, my best, my ever friend. I've had so many wonderful healings. Each day my life gets better and more useful to God. And I'm so grateful to God, Mary Baker Eddy, Christ Jesus, and my practitioner for so much good. And thank you for those wonderful readings. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the music, and I also want to express my gratitude for the Bible lesson this week. Uh, tonight, I wanted to express my gratitude also for uh, how Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church 
is teaching me to be what God created me to be. Not long ago, I was given a line by my practitioner here, by Mrs. Eddy, that reads, quote, Always and above all, be honest and true. Be yourself as God made you. End quote. It can be found in Course in Divinity and General Plectania, also known as the Blue Book, in notes that were taken by a class Mrs. Eddy taught on page 195. Um, before I came here, I had come to believe that living as God intended, such as being healthy, good, righteous, content, confident, and being obedient to him would be difficult, if not impossible, due to my or others' characters, traits, and circumstances. Jesus came to show us how to be what God intended, and Mrs. Eddy gave us the science of the Christ, which is correctly taught here. <coughs> Since being here, and through regular practitioner support, which is helping me grow in my understanding of God and Christian science, I have experienced many changes in my own attitude and in my heart and I, that I had come to believe would not be possible. I have also witnessed transformation in others' lives from varied backgrounds, ages, and needs. The many things I tried before coming to Plainfield left me spiritually hungry, lacked regeneration, were devoid of spirit and power, and lacked any uplifting to God. The continual practical instructions on how to watch our thinking, and as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 10, quote, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, End quote, has been one of the most distinctive differences that is taught here to anything that I tried in the past. These teachings are regenerative, satisfying, uplifting us to God, and has power. This has required work, discipline, willingness, letting go of pride and self-will, and vigilance. But with God, it is possible. We are given so many tools here so that we can have the opportunity to take responsibility for what we do with our thoughts and with the correct teachings of the Bible and Mrs. Eddy's writings, which I am so grateful for. I am grateful to God, to Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and the Plainfield Independent Church. Thank you. <coughs> Shardell. Thank you for the readings and the beautiful music. I would like to offer my thanks tonight for all that is shared at our Wednesday evening testimony meetings. Not long ago, unbeknownst to me, the fuel line broke in my car and it kept stalling. And I remembered several testimonies about praying for God's help and guidance with wonderful results. I was on the road and praying earnestly for guidance and what to do. Although my fuel gauge said low fuel, it came to me to try to get to the service station where I get maintenance done on the van, which is on the other side of town. I kept starting the car, and when I got to a light right at the top of a four-lane highway, it was green, and although the car engine stopped again, and I lost power steering, I coasted through three more green lights, going carefully around cars, stopped again on a now open shoulder, started up again and reached the service station where three men pushed the car to a safe place before putting it into a bay for repairs. And just yesterday, I got two large pizzas for the men in the garage to thank them. I am so grateful for this experience of trusting God and going forward, although it didn't look favorable in human terms. Not once did it occur to me to pull over and give up. Thank you, and good evening. Thank you. This is Bruce. I'd like to say 
uh, give my thanks tonight because something that uh, Dede read tonight where she read from Mrs. Eddy's writings, reform does and must push on the growth of mankind. And I just wanted to give my thanks tonight for the divine push, the godly push that pushes us onward and upward. This is not a willful and it's not imposed by someone else's will or your own will. This is all part of the divine plan. And one of the things that's happened to me as a result of studying Christian science here in the Plainfield Church is learning not to say what I want to do. I mean, there was a time when I was quick to respond to something that looked like it would be really good and, oh, I want to do that. Instead, I'm learning more and more now to wait for the divine impulse to move me into that spot or someone else into that spot. And I must say, it gives me so much joy to see someone else move into a spot and do something good and have them ha have the joy of doing something good as well. So for me, it's, it's a release of selfishness to a certain extent to not want to do something unless I feel the divine push. But when it comes, it's quite a lovely thing and it's good. And it's all onward and upward and it's all for God's glory, of course. I'm thankful for that lesson. Elsie. Elsie from Alabama, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I would, wanted to thank Benjamin tonight for a beautiful article he has written in the magazine Love to the Liberator. Uh, Love is the Liberator. It was well written and extremely inspiring. Uh, his journey from his native country to here and finding Christian science and being active in the church. I, I do wish you would write more articles, uh, Benjamin. It was really beautifully written, and I thank you for it. I thank you for the music tonight. It was beautiful. The readings were beautiful, and I thank God that I'm here. This is a beautiful way to spend an evening. Thank you. Carol. Um, Mrs. Evans used to tell us a story that I believe was written by uh, one of the early workers about a church in a small town that had no electricity. And uh, when the people would come to church, each one would bring a lighted candle. And when each one would come in with his lighted candle, the church would just begin to glow. And as the more full the church became, the more candles that were there, the brighter inside the church. And Mrs. Evans used to tell us that that's like our church. Our lighted candle is our testimonies. And as we bring our testimonies and give our thanks to God, it brings a light that just lights the world. I've never forgotten that story. I thought that was so appropriate. And I just wanted to say thank you for that story and, and for this church. It has changed my own entire life and I am so very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Thank you, good evening. Thank you so much for the readings on Give It All to God to Make Good. That's what I have found in this church. Christ Jesus said, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. This abundant life is what I have found in this church, and it comes from putting God first, loving our fellow man, and working to spread the love, joy, and peace of knowing God's allness. Nowhere else have I found the Bible studies that truly teach the spiritual lessons by which to live, or the very deep meanings that are explained in the roundtable discussions. And all of these truths are practical and bring healing to all our experiences. I'm very grateful for all I'm learning here through all these avenues and through working 
with a dedicated practitioner. And just recently, I was reading in the Eustace book, Clear, Correct Teaching, Christian Science, it's Clear, Correct Teaching. It's such a wonderful source. It's clear scientific teaching that brings healing. And I can't thank this church enough for all that they're doing to put these truths out to the world. Thank you for this service tonight, for all the testimonies and the very beautiful music. Thank you. Sharon. When I first came to this church, I told the practitioner that I would never give a testimony because I don't speak in front of people. And her reaction was, she laughed. <laughs> and um, I didn't understand that, but I had so many healings that finally one night I did get up and I gave a testimony. And she explained to me, when you're really grateful, you can't sit in your seat. So I just want to say how grateful I am for all the blessings that I've received in this church, all the teaching, the healings, all the um, literature we have. Just there's so many things. And I just want to say how grateful I am and for this wonderful meeting tonight and practitioner help. Thank you. Thank you. Mary. Well, I have quite a pile of letters I can read tonight. Um, the first from Ohio. I'm so very grateful for your church, the dedication there, and true Christian science that you provide. And then Colorado. Dear Plainfield, want to thank the hard-working authors of the Bible lessons. This week's lesson on unreality is superb very healing, have been reading it several times to absorb all the mighty truths it contains. Much gratitude, praise, and thanksgiving. And Virginia, thank you to all the dedicated members of this church who are di di diligently striving to establish and maintain Mary Baker Eddy's pure revelation and practice of Christian science through obedience to the 88th edition of the church manual and seeing Mrs. Eddy in her true light. In miscellaneous writings, Mrs. Eddy said, Christian science is my only ideal, and the individual and his ideal can never be severed. If either is misunderstood or maligned, it eclipses the other with a shadow cast by this error. Encloses my monthly contribution to support this great work. With grateful thanks. And then South Carolina, Thank you to everyone there for all the good work. I love all the newsletters that I receive from you and am so appreciative of all your offerings in print and online and especially audio. Very truly yours. And then Iowa. Thank you for your prayerful help and work. I just listened to the round tables, the round table entitled God provides all our needs, and the Bible study on Elijah and Elisha, and I am grateful for all that I am always learning here. Thanks to all. And this from Canada. Typically on Saturday morning, I would sleep in and have a so-called relaxing morning as I felt I deserved it after working all week. I no longer do that, Rather, I set the alarm on my phone so I can be up and ready and not miss the wonderful Bible studies at Plainfield. I was raised by a loving Christian grandmother, not Christian scientist, and as a child I was attentive to some of the Bible stories that were read and explained to our childhood thought, like Jarius' daughter, raised, Daniel in the lion's den, and of course the nativity story as told in the book of Luke. I have been speaking with a practitioner from your church, and from some of the discussions I am learning more how to really apply letting God be in control and letting go of my own plans of how best I think they should or should not be carried out. Sometimes it is difficult as thoughts come up to remind me of something that was said or done to me and how am I going to fix this or that issue. This takes patience. 
but trusting God with all of my heart and mind prepares me to be in tune with the divine mind, ever present, and to be ready to give an answer to anyone of the hope that is in me, with meekness and with joy. I look forward to joining in with all of you at Christ's table each Saturday morning with sincere gratitude and love. And then Kenya, or as Florence says, Kenya. <laughs> God's blessings. This is to let you know that I have visited your webpage, which captured me. We are a young, local, autonomous church. We are 76 church members and 16 orphans who we are caring for. These orphans are placed in the families of our church members. We felt that God called us to serve him in his call. We officially request you in humble prayer and request to please allow us to partner with you in your ministry. Thank you and God bless you. And uh, we've had a few back and forths with him and we have pictures of them and the adorable children that are posted in our bulletin board and also they're on the website. And perhaps we're working to see if maybe some of the children could join our Sunday school through the phone or Skype, and that would be just wonderful. Um, this is Illinois. I'm, I'm shortening it. It was on our church website bulletin board. Prayer led me back to Martha Wilcox's book of addresses and the chapter on affirmations. I am grateful for God's help, support, and love which allows me to progress and grow in the understanding of divine science. And then this from Virginia. I was listening in to last week's Bible study, and I'm always completely amazed how top-notch they are. They are very informative, and this particular study, the Ten Commandments, Part 3, gives you a different perspective on some of the commandments discussed which helps anyone listening to have the ability to dig deeper into their meaning, which in turn has a much greater impact on their life. Such an incredible guideline for everyone. The research that goes into each of these talks is so in-depth, and I can only express the deepest gratitude to each one who participates and shares their thoughts. <clears throat> there is such a feeling of love and unity in wanting to present to anyone listening a blessing, a reaching out to the world and saying, you don't have to accept the picture you see around you. It isn't true. It's not what God created. God has only the best for you. You need to reach out to him to listen and to follow his laws and the reward is infinite good. Thank you all for your diligent God-directed work. It is, a bless, it is blessing people everywhere. Keep on keeping on with love and gratitude. And then this one's from England. Just wanted to thank you and Plainfield so much for the Bible study and roundtable sessions over the last weekend. Following on from that, I followed the instruction and read the pamphlet online, Discerning the Rights of Man by Richard Oakes, which I think I started once, once before, but now have become more familiar with the material on your website. It meant such, such more, so much more to me. Quite astonishing. And the information about the monitor and its lack of independence and integrity was also very concerning. When I went through class, the teacher was extremely keen on the monitor and that we should subscribe but I have never been able to afford more than occasional copies. I also searched the internet about the bookmark, including the bookmark in the, in the United Kingdom, and am interested to see that it might be possible to get a copy of the Blue Book from one of them. How interesting and very wise that there is a library of material here in the United Kingdom to be safe and independent of the laws in the United States. I am so grateful to be able to listen to your services, Bible studies, and roundtables. I am grateful to Jeremy for what must be an immense amount of work to keep your website so up to date all the time. I am very grateful to know more of the true history of the Christian Science Movement, 
which seems to have been hidden from membership. I am grateful to hear of your church's outreach, now connecting with to Kenya and India. It's extremely refreshing that your church can just progress good ideas, such as translations, with prayer, rather than having to take years to get permission. So grateful to you all. And in, in addition to that, I am, joy, I am enjoying reading Bible commentaries and the forum comments and the Bible lesson each day and trying to put what I am learning into practice. With much love. Okay, and then this is California. Wonderful things are happening to, happening to me, and I would like to share them with you. I am so happy. I cannot keep it to myself. So I listened to the recordings of The Greatest Thing in the World, and I decided to follow the advice of the reading, of reading 1 Corinthians 13 every day for three months. Well, it's been about one month now, and this is what I have come up with so far with God's help. I also have to mention that I came across something very important that Martha Wilcox had said. I love Martha Wilcox, by the way. So she said in her article, I am, quote, when correctly understood, we stand for something far greater than just good personalities. In actuality, we are radiant spiritual characters making up the Christ. I am is self-revealing and is forever revealed to himself as all individual men and women, the Christ. When correctly estimated, which one of us is the revealed Christ, end quote. It is so amazing to know this now. So this is my new understanding of 1 Corinthians 13. And then she lists all, all the things she's been learning from that. I have not finished the three months. I am looking forward to learning more about this. I thank you so much for asking the question during the roundtable, are you grateful for life? I now can say, yes, I am grateful for my life as I am learning who I am. Much love. And then, hmm. Just two more. <laughs> Texas. You see, if you give me a space, <laughs> I can <get> up. <laughs> Okay, Texas. Just wanted to thank your church again for the wonderful website. I was re-listening, as I usually do, to one of the roundtable discussions where it was mentioned that not only should we work to see ourselves as the image and likeness of God, but we must work also to see others seeing us and themselves as the image and likeness of God. When you think about it, it seems obvious. How else should we see them? I've heard that before, but it kind of got away from me. And I thank you for bringing it back. And then finally from Vermont. Dear friends, last week's Bible lesson on substance had a good reminder in Proverbs 3, 9, to honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. I appreciate that the Plainfield Church has taught me about the importance of tithing and to give with the first fruits, not the last fruits, of our income. In that spirit of giving, please find and close a donation for the church to use where it is most needed, with love. And here I'll say thank you all for the donations you've been sending in. Greatly appreciated and very wisely and judiciously used. And so now I will let all of you speak. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the readings on letting God do it, in other words. I'm so grateful for Mrs. Eddy's inquiry for us all. Are we grateful for life, truth, and love? I used to just say, yes, I am, but I'm growing in the science. I understand now that just talking it is not enough. So I make an effort now every day to wake up with enthusiasm to be the expression of life, which means what? To be joyful, to think helpful thoughts, know that I have the strength to do whatever I need to do, 
engage in right action. And this, to me, is loving the truth, being grateful, uh, loving life, being grateful for it. And then for truth. If I am really grateful for truth, it means that I love it. So then I make the effort to be careful, to avoid falsehoods, to be certain, to stay on the right side, and to be honest in all that I do. And then for love. If I do love, love God, then I do express. I wake up every day with enthusiasm again to be tender in my actions, to be kind, generous, humble, sincere, guileless, with good temper, and all that means love. I must say that staying grateful for these three has brought me more to be grateful for. And I can say that the desires of my heart have come to pass in amazing ways. I cannot be grateful enough for Christ Jesus, Mrs. Teddy, and the science and how it really makes us live the Christ-like life that Christ Jesus came to show all mankind to live. Grateful to be here tonight. Grateful for the, all the testimonies, the hymns, and of course the readings. Happy to be here. Thank you.